perspective. Okay, so um, what I want you to do is I want you to start off and put four points towards the corner of your paper. And then start at one point, and it doesn't really matter where, and stare at the other dot, and then just let your hand move to that dot. And then continue to do the same thing. Put your pencil or pen at one point and focus. Just keep looking at that other dot and let your hand follow. Draw it along the paper. Same thing all the way around. And I guess I'm going clockwise, but it doesn't have to go that direction. Okay. Uh, roughly square. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to use that box form to start off with. And we'll start off down here, and you guys can continue to practice your box and lightly sketch in this object from whatever perspective you want at this point. And this box form is one of our four basic forms. And the idea is that from these four basic forms, changing the size and the relative scale of, of them, you can combine them with, with one another in, in order to achieve um, an infinite uh, possibility of forms, up to and including probably the most difficult form is the human form. Lincoln, Lincoln, I've been thinking, what the hell have you been drinking? Is it water? Is it blood? Oh my gosh, it's serpentine! Okay, so after that, what I want you to do next is I want you to very, very lightly pencil in a, a box that you're looking at from the top view. Very, very lightly. And, and in this case, try and have it be square. So you're going to make a cube. And I'm going outside of my line, and that's okay too. But I want you to think of like a, a perfect cube. And just keep drawing your lines until you feel like you've got that cube in perspective where these parallel lines converge to common vanishing points and just lightly pencil that in and now we're going to imagine that this uh, cube is transparent like an ice cube and so we'll see the back lines too and very lightly remember that this line is parallel with this line and this line and so if a line goes that's parallel to that will converge to a common vanishing point and we'll do the same thing for this back edge over here and so that'll converge to a common point along these two lines and then very lightly put that in there and then we'll connect that back dot and hopefully it's relatively straight. And now in order to reinforce the perceptual, um, uh, the perception of this cube will reinforce these front edges. And provide heavy weighting on those outside edges. Okay, so now we've got this cube sitting on our page. And what we're going to do is we're going to make one of the other four basic forms, which is a cylinder. And we'll do that by creating a circle on the bottom plane and then extruding that up. So in order to make a circle, what, what's helpful is to find the center. And the center of any quadrilateral or square or um, uh, rhombus or whatever, if you take the diagonals of those two of, of, of the four sides, the center point will be the cross-section of that. And then, we're, it's a matter of drawing a frisbee, a frisbee in air. And this is not a circle, this is an ellipse. And so it takes a little bit of time to get that circle to lay flat, but you can think about a race car going all the way around this track. And another way to help is to draw the bisections in perspective. You know where the center point is, so you can find these midlines, too. And that race car goes around, it touches the corner, 
of those bisections. And so you've got a, an ellipse that's in perspective. Now what we do is we just extrude that up, which means that we uh, pull lines up from that that are, in this case, they're relatively vertical. And those edges will be uh, will meet the edges of the top ellipse that we create. Again, we'll do this the bisecting the corners, binding the midlines in perspective, and then uh, race car. And I always find it's helpful not to start at a point, but to start on a corner somehow and to zoom around to find this. And we just have to massage those lines into place. And remember what the ellipse is. Like a race car going around a corner, it never comes to a point. It continues to go around. And that's the case with circles when we see them in perspective. It may look like there's a little football point to it, but that's usually because of uh, figure ground relationships. All right, so now we've got our cube and we have our cylinder. And I think that's the hardest one for students to understand because once we understand the cylinder, it's easy to find the cone and the sphere is um, just the, the uh, ability to draw a circle and to imply value. And we'll cover that next. Now we'll go up to the top quadrant and we'll do this, a similar thing of finding a cube in space, very lightly penciling in that in. And once you get the hang of this, it'll become like the back of your hand. You'll understand how to do this. And we'll draw that back edge, too. It help, it's helpful if it's uh, not right up against the edge so that these back edges and the front edge, edges line up. So it's helpful if we turn it just a little bit. But uh, And that means that these angles are not the same. They're, they change just a little bit. But... For right now, we'll let that be. Try and remember that these lines that are parallel to one another, they'll eventually uh, run into one another at a point called the vanishing point. And we'll do the same thing as we did for the cylinder. We'll find a, a circle and we'll bisect the bottom rectangle or square. then we'll draw a circle. In perspective, so it's more of an ellipse. And in this case, we can find our top plane. Again, I guess that's what we're establishing when we make this X. We're establishing that plane. We can find that top point of our cone is going to be uh, the midpoint of that plane and the height will be determined by that separation. So this is that axis of that cone and now what we'll do is we'll draw lines out the outermost extent from the point of view will be the edge of that cone. And so the the next task, like the circle, is to use value to help reinforce that form. Circle, the last one in our quadrant, we, we could make a square, you could make a cube, and you could find all of that, uh, draw in circles, but it's just a sphere, it's, it's just a circle. And although it, you know, it's a simple idea, we don't have to go through any convolutions in order to create it, it is a tricky thing to draw. And it's always fun to try and draw them. Okay, so we've got our circle. Um, now, what I want to do is I want to um, use the eraser to make sense of these lines a little bit more. And that's where the, the eraser is a very good tool in drawing. It's not always a, a method of just removing mistakes, but it's um, a useful tool in clarifying what you want to show or what you can see. 
And so I'll pull away these these excess lines and and then reinforce some of these lines um, before moving on to adding value. Were you ever in Quebec loading timber on the deck and you break your bleeding neck riding on the donkey? Way, hey, way we go, donkey riding, donkey riding. Way, hey, way we go, riding on a donkey. Were you ever in Miracle? We'll add value to these, and the, the boxes, similar to what you've done before, will lay in two different values. One for one face and the other for another face. And we'll assume that the light source is where it was for our previous exercise, up in the top left corner. And these values are arranged uh, uniformly along the plane. Now, when you look at something in real life, what you'll see is that there's usually some kind of gradient to this uh, value, one way or the other, like it's darker at this point over there. For our purposes and for um, uh, this, this exercise, you can just treat that as all one value. The value system of, this, of the cylinder uh, can be gleaned from our, our cube, our box form. The value that's on this plane can get applied to this point. We know that this point and this plane, essentially, this tall, thin box has the value of, of that box. And this is all a way to maintain a uh, common light source in a number of forms. Uh, this method is and just a nice, a nice way to illustrate the arrangement of values on these forms as well. Likewise, the value on this face we can assign to this plane over here. And again, these are tall boxes. And what we find is that there's this uh, infinite amount of those shapes, those value shapes, that go around the cylinder. And we can make a transition from this value, this darker value, to this value over in this region. And those value shapes, again, are like these tall boxes that just change slightly in value. And again, value being light and dark. Around that side, slightly lighter. Around this side, slightly darker. And the uh, cone is, is very similar, except for uh, long, tall, thin boxes. The, the uh, value systems on the cone are lo long, tall triangles. You know, something like this shape, and we have has that value, and then over on this side, Right along there, it's going to have that value. And slightly over here, slightly darker. And the shape of these values all around this cone shape, they're triangle forms. Instead of tall boxes, these are tall triangles. And again, a gradation of values. And we have the ability to get a limitless uh, a number of values here, or a finite value, in order to imply this conical form, one of the four basic forms of uh, creating pictorial space or rendering. And now, lastly, the uh, the sphere, and this is a object that has a, a, a continuous gradation of values all over its shape. Um, and they're loosely gathered, like these are the 
triangle forms and these are the tall boxes. These are loosely gathered in lunette shapes. And so we, again we can take this value and assign it to this area. It gets slightly lighter around that side. And we have our white area over there like the white area on top of this box. You ever in Miramichi where they tie you to a tree and the skeeters they bite we riding on the donkey way hey away we go donkey riding donkey riding Were you ever in Baltimore with the dance upon the sanded floor and the girls all ask for more? Riding on a donkey. Way, hey, way. Uh, we have our four basic forms. And from these, again, all uh, other forms can be made. And I'll give this just a little bit of value so those pie wedges aren't so obvious. Have, have a little bit of a gradation. And I look forward to seeing what you come up with. Where we go, donkey riding, donkey riding. Way, hey, where we go, riding on a donkey. Were you ever in Calio, where the girls are all the go, and the boys dance heel and toe? Riding on a donkey. Way, hey, where we go, donkey riding, donkey riding. Way, hey, Were you ever in Mobile Bay, screwing cotton by the day? Dollar and a half is a white man's pay. Riding on a donkey. Way, hey, way we go. Donkey riding, donkey riding. Way, hey, way we go. Riding on a donkey. Were you ever in London town, where the girls, they all come down? See the queen with her golden crown. Riding.